everybody, Elena Yee here with the Xbox app on Windows 10. Just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of what it's like to use the app and just give you a sense of what kind of functionality you can get in it. So when you first log into the app, you'll fir be first spit out into this home screen. And it gives you recently played games, uh, consoles that you can game stream from if you're already connected, featured games that Microsoft wants you to know about, this activity feed that combines everything you've been doing as well as that of your friends. And then off on the right hand side you can look up people by their gamer tag and just see what everybody on your friends list. Um, the rest of the app, if you want to see what's going on with it, it's off the navigation is done off on this left hand side. And you can kind of open it up so that you can get a description of what each section is. So my games is for anything that's related to Windows 10 applications. Ostensibly, this is supposed to be for any Windows games that you buy through the store. Um, but really, when you click on add a game from your PC, you can add any application that you're running in Windows here. So it's basically a launcher for any Windows applications. So I'll add Paint, just for fun, and click on Play, and it just launches that program. Messages, super straightforward. You just have a list of all the messages that are in your inbox and the conversation will be threaded off on this right hand side. Activity alerts show you the different people that have added you as friends, for example. As you can see, these are the people who have added me as a friend in the last couple of weeks. Achievements shows all your achievements for games that list the games in, you know, deep by default newest to oldest. When you actually click on a game that you have achievements in, you'll have this difference between the ones that you have act, uh, unlocked and then those that are not. Everything's grayed out that you haven't unlocked yet. Obviously a lot easier to navigate through as opposed to on Xbox One where uh, you're just endlessly scrolling to the right. Here you have a mouse with the scroll wheel presumably so it's a lot faster and easier to kind of see all the different achievements you have or haven't unlocked. Uh, the game DVR section, this is where any clips that you take using Windows 10's game DVR function, which uh, tech basically captures anything that you have running in Windows 10. It's meant for Windows 10 games, but you can use it pretty much with any program. Uh, the clips will show here. Um, for those on your PC, you have a shared tab, and then you also have a community tab here, where you can see pretty much anything that people have been capturing. There's a, a section here for the store, and this is really just a link out to the application for the store. This is not within the app. It opens up, as you can see, a separate app here, and I accidentally did that. The One Guy section here will actually give you TV listings, so if you don't feel like going over to your Xbox One to see what's on right now and you're connected to your Xbox One, it'll bring up the guide listings if you've already configured that on your Xbox One. The Connected tab here actually allows you to do that connection to an Xbox One. I'm already connected to my normal work Xbox One, but if you needed to add a separate one, you would click on Add a Device and then find it here. If it doesn't automatically show up, you would go onto your Xbox One, figure out what its IP address is, and then enter it into this section down here. Hit Connect. Uh, works super smoothly. It'll come up once you do that. You'll have to do that if you're on different routers in your house. That's what I had to do at my desk here because the two devices weren't seeing each other. And then down here you have settings where you can configure a few things, not a lot, like notifications, whether you want, whether you want live tiles on or not. Um, and more importantly, if you want game DVR to be a function, and if so, if you want to use the standard Windows shortcuts or if you want to add use your own set of short keyboard shortcuts to activate it. You can also configure uh, some of the uh, video encoding settings for the video clips as, as well as how long they can be. The maximum time is two hours. You can also set it to be lower, like an hour, 30 minutes. Default is an hour. And then you also can configure the quality of game streaming. So one of the features that you can do in Windows 10 is stream a game from your Xbox One to your Windows 10 PC, whether that's a desktop PC, a laptop, or even a tablet. And you can choose here what the encoding level is like, just you know how good the game is going to look when it streams.
Uh, one thing I will note is that when I tried this feature, that even on medium with one device on a wireless connection, I had some stuttering. So you do want to consider what your configuration is like when you choose that encoding level. So that wraps up our look at the Xbox app. Uh, hopefully, like on Xbox One, they will get more functionality and features as time goes on, as Windows 10 gets its rollout for updates. Uh, for the time being, though, for everything related to Windows 10, Xbox One, and all things gaming, you're ready in the right place, IGN.com. Thank <laughs> you.